Hello and welcome to this Leprosy Sunday service from the Leprosy Mission Scotland. Whether you're joining us by yourself or with your whole church uh, together today, you are more than welcome to worship with us. Leprosy Sunday is a chance for the church to think about people affected by leprosy today, to think about the love that Jesus had for people affected by leprosy in his day. It's our chance to pray together for the needs of people affected by leprosy and to consider how else, following Jesus' example, we can reach out to help, reach out in love to people affected by leprosy today. Our service today is happening inside the wonderful Priory Church behind me. Our music is being provided uh, by our friends at the Celtic Worship uh, Group uh, and we'll start our service uh, by singing if you wish at home by yourself or just listening uh, but we will sing Be Thou My Vision. Be Thou My Vision O Lord of my heart Not be all else to me save that thou art thou my best thought by day or by night waking or sleeping thy presence my life Thou my wisdom and Thou my true word I ever with Thee and Thou with me, Lord Thou my great Father and I Thy true Son Thou in me dwelling and I
My name is Mike Parker and I'm delighted to welcome you to the Priory in South Queensferry and we thank God for the ministry of the Leprosy Mission. Our first reading today is from John 14 verses 1 to 12. Jesus says, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way, and the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on you do know him, and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, Don't you know me, Philip? even after I've been among you such a long time. Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How could you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say, that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these, because I am going to the Father. Our second reading today comes from the book of Matthew. Uh, chapter 25 from verse 31 When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him he will sit on his throne in heavenly glory all the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats he will put the sheep on his right hand and the goats on his left then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, I tell you the truth, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did for me. We're now going to sing again. Uh, our second hymn today, In Christ Alone. Our first reading talked about it is in him that we will find our way. He is our way, truth and life. And so in Christ alone, let's stand or sit, whatever you are, and sing.
has found He is my light, my strength, my song This cornerstone, this solid ground Firm through the fiercest drought and storm What heights of love, what depths of peace When fears are still, when striving cease My comforter, my all in all Here in the love of Christ I stand flesh, fullness of God in helpless babe, this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save, till on that cross as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied. of Christ I live There in the ground His body lay Light of the world by darkness slain Then bursting forth in glorious day Up from the grave Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this Leprosy Sunday. Thank you for the many churches and people individually joining this service together to worship you 
and to remember people affected by leprosy around the world. People who were loved and cared for by Jesus during his earthly life. We pray that you would speak to us, that you would show us how best we can serve you by making this world a safer place for those who are vulnerable and in need. We pray for those who serve in your name, caring for people affected by leprosy. We pray that you would protect them. We pray that you would strengthen and equip them, that they would have all that they need to deliver the care and the support and the love that is so desperately needed. We thank you that better care is now available than in the past. We thank you that medicine is now available that wasn't in the past. But we pray for the hundreds of thousands who will be diagnosed with leprosy this year, that they will be able to access the help that they need, that it won't be too far away or too difficult to get hold of. We pray for protection from persecution, from violence, from discrimination, for people who find themselves infected with this ancient disease. We thank you that we can worship together remotely like this. Thank you that we can know you hear our prayers, even though they are, we are two or three not together in person. And we pray that you would answer our prayers and that your church would be a part of making leprosy a thing of the past, would be a part of finishing that task that Jesus started. We pray that you would bless us in the rest of our time together. In Jesus' name, amen. We're now going to hear a short story of a young man from Nigeria and what it meant for him to contract leprosy. Sunana Friday. My name is Friday. I grew up in a loving family in a small village in Nigeria. I lived with my brothers and sisters and my parents. We had a good life. We were surrounded by friends in our village and I was safe and well. But when I was 11, everything changed. At first, I noticed a numb patch on my foot. It got worse, and in the end, I had no feeling in my foot at all. My friends began to notice when we were playing. Finally, my mum took me to the Leprosy Mission's Chanchaga Hospital. There, I was diagnosed with leprosy. When we arrived home, my father would not let me in our house. He said I couldn't be part of my family anymore and I could not live with them. I was forced to leave. They thought I was cursed, unclean. They were afraid. My mum took me back to the hospital at Chinchaga and left me there. I was 11 years old. I was alone. It was a very dark time for me. But I am grateful that this was not the end of my story. At the hospital in Chanchaga, a light began to dawn. The medical team at Chanchaga Hospital greeted me with kindness. They gave me medicine to cure me of leprosy so it couldn't damage my body anymore. A nurse called Mary took me into her home. I finally felt safe again. Now I have nearly completed my education. I just have one more year to go. I want to go to university and become a teacher. If it wasn't for the leprosy mission, I know I would have died. I had nowhere else to go. I owe them my life. They loved me when I had been completely rejected. They gave me back my life. With your help, the leprosy mission can work with communities like mine to help them understand that leprosy is not a curse. It is not something to be feared. Sometimes I imagine what life would be like if my parents had not rejected me. 
you can make sure another child does not suffer the way I did. Your kindness can keep a family together and make sure every child affected by leprosy feels safe in their own home. You can help end the stigma. Please donate today. How many times since March last year have you heard people say things like, it's not fair, or I wish things could return to normal, or I don't feel myself anymore, or this doesn't feel quite like home, does it? We're going to think a little bit more just now about those two items. This isn't home, and it's not fair. With so many aspects of life turned upside down, it's hard to know what we're supposed to feel sometimes. What we're supposed to do as the rules keep changing. Many of us have been torn, pulled in different directions, with competing responsibilities within those ever-changing rules and regulations. This doesn't feel like home. It's not fair. Home should be a safe place. It should be a haven, the anchor, the cornerstone of our life, the launch pad from which we go out into the world to live all of the different aspects of our life. Instead, home at the moment is a school. Home has become an office, a gym. It can even feel a bit like a prison. In the 1940s, psychologist called Abraham Maslow introduced the concept of a hierarchy of needs that all humans have. Maslow's hierarchy is still widely used today. The idea is that different levels of need build upon each other, and only if our most basic needs are being met, being satisfied, can we attend or begin to think about those higher levels of need. And many of the ones that are at basic level needs such as shelter, food and water, rest, security and safety, they can all kind of be summarised together in that word home. And without these being met, we're unable to attend properly to areas such as friends and family relationships, self-esteem, freedom, creativity. The idea of home and what it represents, or more accurately, of not having a home, or being able to go home and the desire to do so, runs right through the Bible, where the idea of exile occurs again and again. When I say the word exile, we're probably thinking of Daniel and the exile in Babylon in 500 and something BC, but that is far from the only one. Right from the very beginning, Adam and Eve, Cain, the Tower of Babel, Abraham, Joseph, Moses, Joshua, and on and on, all have the idea of losing home, being banished from home, returning home, going to a new home within their stories. And because of injustice or some other failing, often the physical place that should be home doesn't feel welcoming, doesn't feel warm, doesn't feel safe, secure. It doesn't feel like home. So this need for home, this desire for a safe, secure, perfect home that Maslow identified in the 20th century is actually a pivotal idea in the Bible. For thousands of years we have understood and known that concept of home, right from Genesis through to Revelation. Home is in the Bible. It's at the core of how God created us to be and to live. In the film we saw earlier, Friday was thrown out of home. He hadn't done anything wrong. It wasn't the result of war or conflict. He just got sick. Leprosy is an ancient disease, tracing right back itself to biblical times. And throughout the centuries, for many, many people, one of the consequences of leprosy has been exile. 
been having to leave home, being forced to leave home and community because of fear, superstition and prejudice. You would think that with all our modern medical understanding and treatments that the world would have moved past this. Now it's far less common than it once was, but as Friday found out, those same old fears and prejudices can have the same result even today. Nowadays, we are all terribly familiar with viral loads, viral transmission, R numbers, and all sorts of medical concepts that we never knew about before. Leprosy isn't caused by a virus, but it is a bacteria, and it spreads in much the same way droplets from person to person, just much more slowly than the coronavirus. Leprosy, the symptoms develop slowly as well. It can often start with discoloured patches of skin somewhere on the body and or with areas of the body becoming numb and lose their sense of feeling as happened to Friday. Left untreated, this loss of feeling gets worse and worse. You can also lose the ability to move properly, to control parts of the body, particularly the hands, the feet or the face. And as it goes on and on and on, this gets worse. This gets worse. It makes it much more likely to injure yourself and not to know that it's happened. And so ever increasing injuries and deformities can occur. It spreads from person to person. Drops, droplets, coughs and sneezes is the main route that it spreads. But unlike coronavirus, it's a very easy treatment. We have had a drug treatment regime for decades that will cure leprosy. And if it's cured before any of the serious damage occurs, that can be the end of it. And yet for far too many people, because they don't get that treatment quickly enough, they face a lifetime of disability and disfigurement. And worse in many ways than any of those physical effects of the disease, it's still, as Friday found out, as a lot of superstition, prejudice surrounding it. People can lose their homes, they can also lose their jobs, lose access to education for their family, they can be discriminated against by the law in many parts of the world. There are still today over a hundred different laws in existence that discriminate against people affected by leprosy. It is far, far from being something that is just ancient history. Today, one person every two minutes, roughly, is diagnosed with leprosy. And of those, roughly one every half an hour is a child. Friday was 11 when the symptoms of leprosy first appeared. He was thrown out of home for having leprosy, and as he said, it was the worst day of my life. And now, even though he has a new, safe place to stay at Chinchaga, he must be painfully aware that this isn't really his home, and that he can't see his parents, his brothers, his sisters, his friends, his neighbours anymore. What a terrible thing to happen to a child. I think we can all say with him, it's not fair. This isn't how the world should be. This isn't what home should feel like. We should be better than this. A home should be better than this. In the Bible, those two problems of injustice, of not fear, and of this world not feeling like home, or not being home, are in some ways two sides of the same coin and they come into focus and they both find their solution in the person 
of Jesus. In Jesus' time, Israel was under violent occupation by Rome. It wasn't the home that God's people had hoped for or expected throughout their history. Jesus often spoke about the world he was living in and the world in general as being a form of exile for all of us from the life and the home that we were supposed to have. In our first reading, he explicitly told his followers that he was going on to prepare a new home for them. We read, Your heart must not be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many dwelling places. If not, I would have told you, I am going away to prepare a place for you. If I go away and prepare a place for you, I will come back and receive you to myself, so that where I am, you may be also. You know the way to where I am. Lord Thomas said, We don't know where you go. How can we know the way? And Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus himself is our route to the home in God's household that we crave. The route back to that perfect home that we've been exiled for ever since the beginning and which will be recreated in the end. Genesis 3 all the way through to Revelation 21. And this is the good news of the Gospel, that in Jesus, this life which so often doesn't satisfy, this world which just feels so wrong sometimes, isn't meant to. But through faith in Jesus, we can enter, or you could say re-enter, the home and the household where we will be fully satisfied and safe and warm and loved. But is that it? Should we just put up with our lot here and now, suffer in silence, waiting for what will come in the end? Should we let others suffer because that's just the way things are and life's not fair? Absolutely not. In the same way that the idea of exile, of being separated from our home, flows through all of the Bible, so does the idea of justice. Justice in the Bible is centred on all those situations where it's not fair. Not fair in a true sense, not in the way sometimes our children whine at us. And seeking to make that fair is what justice is about. To make this world, which isn't our home, a bit more like the home that we long for. It's about providing for widows and orphans, the poor and the sick. It's about supporting the vulnerable and giving a voice to the voiceless. It's about preventing the rich and the powerful from abusing or exploiting the poor and the powerless. Again and again and again, this justice and righteousness is what is required of God's people. Micah puts it most simply when he says, And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. In our second reading, when Jesus was describing the institution of that new home that he will bring, the criteria for entrance will be what Michael just described. The sheep and the goats. Have we given food and water to those who are hungry and thirsty? Have we provided shelter to those who need it? Have we clothed the poor? Have we cared for the sick? Have we brought compassion to those in prison? Or in despair? Have we brought about justice? Have we tried to make this world a better home for everybody, especially those in most need? In the film, Mary the nurse lived out this justice and love directly by welcoming Friday into her home. But neither Mary or any of us are just left to our own devices and our own strength justly throughout our lives. Jesus has given us his example to follow and the Holy Spirit to guide us and give us the strength. 
He said, Whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these, because I am going to the Father. For the Leprous Commission, acting justly, making this world more like the home it should be, doing the works that Jesus himself did, means doing everything we can to love, to care for, to support people affected by leprosy, to live safer, healthier, more dignified lives. Doing that even greater thing means not just caring for some people affected by leprosy, it means ending leprosy altogether, making it a thing of the past, eradicating it completely. Then we will have finished at least one of the things that Jesus asked us to do, something that he started during his earthly life. There are many, many things that we need to do to fully spot, treat and stop leprosy around the world. Today, we are focusing on the discrimination, the stigma, the mistreatment that people affected by leprosy experience. It's not fair that still today there are over a hundred laws around the world which specifically target and discriminate against people affected by leprosy. It's not fair that people like Friday can still be thrown out of their home for having leprosy. And it's not fair that other people today face losing their job, <clears throat> losing their school place, being divorced, in some cases facing acts of violence simply because they have leprosy. As God's people, will you help to bring justice to these situations? Will you pray for people affected by leprosy around the world? We can send you prayer materials to guide your prayers if you wish. Very few of us in Scotland will ever directly meet someone affected by leprosy or be able to assist them in person. But we can give to make sure that that help can be provided. We may not be able to bang on the doors of the right politicians and parliaments, but we can ensure that those who can have the means to do so. We can challenge age-old superstitions face to face, but we can support those who can. We can give someone who needs it a place to call home, but we can fund it. God requires us to act justly. Jesus will measure us on how we help the vulnerable. We can do so in many different areas of life, in our own neighbourhoods all over Scotland. But today, on Leprosy Sunday, will you please give what you can to help people affected by leprosy around our world today. You can give online, the details are on the screen and will be after the end of our service. You can give by text message. Simply on Leprosy Sunday, text the word Sunday to 70450. Please give what you can. Please pray as often as you are able to be a part of finishing what Jesus started and making leprosy a thing of the past. Amen. We will finish our service today with one more piece of music. A blessing. Versions of this blessing were sung all over the world over the last 10 months throughout different periods of lockdown. And this Scottish version starts in Gaelic, so don't be surprised if it's being sung in both English and Gaelic. Good talking, egg and 
May his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children.
Thank you for joining us at this Leprosy Sunday service today. Thank you for praying with us and we pray that you would continue to pray for people like Friday affected by leprosy around the world. We pray that by serving Jesus we can finish what he started and make leprosy a thing of the past for everyone affected by leprosy like Friday. If you want more information about how to support people affected by leprosy, there are details of how you can do that below. Uh, and if you please would consider what you can give today. Give online, give by text message. Everything you give will make a huge difference to improving the quality of life, the safety and that feeling of home for people like Friday around the world. Thank you for joining us today. God bless.